Hey everybody, my name is Patrick and I own McDonald Timing. And today we are going to set up a cross country meet in Meet Pro 2. So, yes, uh, I have linked two videos down in the description. Uh, the first one is setting up a track meet within Meet Pro 2, and then the second one is the wave start video within Meet Pro 2. Um, both of those are requisite to me for this video because I'm going to skip quite a few of the steps that are literally the exact same. So from the track and field video, you can get the uh, some of the input of the entries and the uh, certainly getting the results and, and setting up the uh, finish link system and then setting up your live results and all that sort of stuff. All that is in the track and field video, which is really helpful. Uh, in the wave start video is the recent in invention of the wave start protocol within Meet Pro. Um, so that has not changed a whole lot. There's been a couple of, of small fixes and, and uh, that, that made it even better uh, since that video has come out. But that's important for the wave start video. You'll see I gloss over that in this video really, really quickly because it's not necessary for most people. So uh, we're going to get into it and we're going to do two entry styles today. Uh, as is mentioned in the video and also in the track and field video, pulling in entries from direct athletics and or TFERS is generally pretty easy. It's literally the exact same as track and field, so go check that out there. Um, the difference within uh, cross country is that it's going to be slightly different for pulling in like something from a a semicolon delimited file or in a CSV file. That's the big difference with cross, cross country. So we, I found, you know, MileSplit does a semicolon delimited file, which is pretty much the same, no big deal. But the CSV edition within cross country is a little bit quirky. Um, it's really simple, but it's just it's better to know exactly what's coming in and take your time going over the headers. Uh, and the one thing is, uh, we got I got this file from a friend of mine. It's a bombs page entry file. Um, there were no entries on the the file itself, so I created a, the event entries that go along with it in an additional column. You don't have to do this. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. So let's get into it. Okay, so we are going to breeze through this because it's really really simple. Uh, we're going to go create new meet. And we're going to call it XC Meet. Great name. Um, today is middle of August. We don't need any of this other information, but this one is going to be a high school cross country. And we are going to score, and then we should be good to go. And so now we are going to import a semicolon delimited file. And we're going to come here, and I have a file from MileSplit ready to go. Um, always force metric, add missing events, yes, and ignore competitor number. Um, it's just a little bit easier in the long run. We're going to renumber everybody anyway. Uh, so we have teams, and we have names, of course. And then we are going to come in, competitor numbers. You can clear them first if you really want to, but you're really just going to reassign them, and then you'll be good to go. You come in, check the reports, and also, so now you can see that we have some new entries here uh, by event, but also team wave assignments. Um, not going to go into waves in this particular video because they are, you know, I handled them in the other one, but if you want to, use wave start, calculate net times, and then you come over here and come over and select a wave, but we need to do the wave in here. Add a wave, wave names required. I'm not gonna do it again. So um, there's another video for it that's linked in, in the description that easily handles it, but this is it. This is basically everything that we need to do for a regular event within Meet Pro. Um, from here, the reports are important. So printing off rosters, uh, making sure that we have competitor number because that is related to the chip, but it is really that simple with the mile split stuff. Um, so you can see here, that's just a placeholder name. Um, it's super, super simple to get this going and doing it quickly. Uh, from here, it's all about the, you know, the FAT interface um, because everything is going through links and for us at least. And so, you know, within finished links and all the, the chip stuff is basically just a very um, complicated way to get a lap time. 
Uh, so as soon as you're set up here, you're, you're good to go. You don't need to worry about session with the cross country event. Um, but then you do in links have to make sure that you get the, uh, the cor correct event order. Um, and then just come over and, and get results from links. And there are some names, um, from some sort of basic file that I had before. Uh, and so, you know, really it's, it is exactly that simple. Um, if we were to come in and let's go back through and purge all the teams and all this stuff and yes, it's irreversible. Um, however, uh, I know that there are some other ways that you can get the imports. Uh, first of all, from DA, if you want to import entries from Direct Athletics, that's super easy to do through the Direct Athletics login or the same thing with Tifers. Very, very simple, comes in, no problem. Again, you just want to reorder the, uh, you know, re do, redo the competitor number order uh, in a way that's more accessible to you. But then with Cross Country, you should have custom CSV available as well. And so in custom CSV, we have a couple of of CSV files that are brought in from Bombs page, which is apparently you uh, well used up in Ohio and probably some other various places. Um, it's basically the same thing, CSV import as uh, you know using if you've ever used the race director. Uh, again, super super simple. Uh, there's no template. So one thing you can do in race director, which does cut down on on entry time, is the uh, template idea so you can figure out uh, you know exactly what's going to happen before it you know your event and then you can just keep taking it in and uh, you know that doesn't exist here but again it's basically the same exact thing the one thing that I did add is that uh, there's from bombs page there's no uh, no specific uh, you know nature of, of the event so I went ahead and added the event and so you know, I, I can do this a little bit, you know, more easily. Um, and so, yeah, so all the kids came in through uh, through here, which is all fantastic. And again, super easy. So as I said, it was really, really quick, less than five minutes, and we got you fully set up, in my opinion. Um, now, the things that I want to take away from it, uh, one, is that always make sure that your information within Meet Pro is exactly the way you want it before you send it over to, to Finish Links. Um, I know it's a lot of things like I can do it really quickly and get it out to finish links. It really doesn't take a whole lot more time, but making sure the data is exactly the way you want it is important. Um, one thing I mentioned with the uh, CSV file is that I added the actual event entry to all of the people. It's really simple. You know, I just created the event name and then copied and pasted it all the way down. Um, that is the way that I personally prefer to do it. I know that there are a lot of people that don't care about that at all. Uh, the thing is that Finish Links will, it, it actually operates in a very, very simplistic fashion when it comes to the chip timing device. So it, the chip reader says, hey, this is, is this, uh, you know, it's the, the code, the hexadecimal code. And then Finish Link says, oh, well, that code belongs to bib 167. And then it says 167 is, you know, whatever. And, you know, whoever, you know, Jane Smith. And so it's, it's really super basic when, when it comes to it. So, you know, making sure when you have a chip system that you've got the chip file that's actually correct is very important. And I can tell you this because I've learned the hard way. Make sure that the chip file that's coming in is exactly important. Um, there are some hidden settings within finish links that are important to kind of gather along with as well. Um, one thing that people do in finish links is that they will set up for the lift file to be written every two, five, ten seconds or something like that. For cross country, it's really helpful if you are doing scoreboards through uh, through Meet Pro, if you, or if you're doing live results that kind of automatically get populated every uh, you know 15, 20 seconds or whatever. So just do be careful that uh, this this auto import feature with that lift file being constantly rewritten. Uh, when it comes to track and field, it's not an ideal way to go about things. Um, but within cross country, totally fine. So personally, though, I prefer to have the event in finish links actually populated with all the athletes. That way, I know how many people we should be expecting to come across the line. You know, we do big, big, big invitationals, you know, 500 plus kids. 
and it's kind of useless for, for that in particular. But if we're doing a smaller event, maybe there's 30 or 40 kids, we can actually count as the gun goes off and we see them all, all racing how many people we should be expecting. And then we know when to close the, the, the event and we can you know populate results and print those off and, and do all those things. So that's just my personal preference. I really want to make sure that the data that goes from Meet Pro over to Finish Links is proper within Meet Pro. It just makes it a lot easier when it gets into Finish Links. So I hope that helps. I hope that makes all sense. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave it down below and we'll get back to you. And uh, good luck with this season and we'll talk to you soon.